Hello, I'm back from my week away now and I thought today that I'd look at my new Derwent Lightfast pencils. They got the tin of 100, which I showed in a recent art haul video. This isn't going to be a completely comprehensive video about every single aspect, but what I did want to do is give some kind of context for the Derwent Lightfast pencils compared with other popular coloured pencils. So the tin itself comes with a booklet with all of the pencils and the light fast information and pigment information in, in it. It comes with a sample of light fast paper, which is hot press watercolour paper, 100% cotton in effect. And then it's got three of these fairly flimsy plastic trays. I've taken a couple out for some swatching that I'm going to do later. So what I want to do is show you how a few different coloured pencils lay down and wear down, how they blend and how they compare to each other with regards to creaminess against dryness, hardness against softness. I've also put together a sheet with the main characteristics of the pencils I'm going to be looking at. And then I've swatched out all of the Lightfast pencils and found the most similar colours. Um, in other brands. I've chosen to look at the Caran d'Ache Luminance, the Derwent Chroma Flow, Derwent Roaring, Derwent Inktense, Derwent Lightfast, Faber-Castell Polychromos, Holbein Artist Colour Pencils and Prismacolor Premieres. There are a few pencils I've chosen not to include in the comparison today because I tend to use them in a different kind of way and that's the Wood Easter Billows. I've not included them just because they have such thick leads and I tend to not use them for actually colouring in, but more for mark making. The Prismacolor Premieres I use as outline pencils and I don't tend to colour in with them. I'm not including pastel pencils because, that, again, they're used in a very different way. And then the Creta Colour Mega Colours. Again, I tend to lump them in with the Woody Stabilos because they're a lot wider. I don't use them for detailed colouring. I tend to use them for mock making in mixed media. I've also got a number of watercolour pencils. So the Albrecht Dura, Derwent Graphite Tint and Derwent Watercolour Pencils that I'm not going to include. I've chosen to include the Derwent Ink Tense because I feel that they've got some unique colours which occasionally I use just for their colour pencil property as opposed to their water colour pencil property. So I've just put them there for comparison. So I'll start off with this information sheet. I've got the total number of the range. I've not put down really, really specific measurements for the barrel and the lead width. I've just put down whether they're wide or slim because I find when I'm using them, there's not much difference between the slim ones and there's not much difference between the wide ones that I can feel. I've included light fast information. Then I've included if the base that the pigment is suspended in is mainly wax, oil, or in the case of Holbein's, they're classed as oil and wax. And then I've done the approximate cost of a 24 set. I chose the 24 set because the Dermot drawing pencils only come in 24. With the Caran d'Ache Luminance, though, they don't come in a 24, they come in a 20 set. These prices are very approximate because they can vary from day to day. And I've often got mine for cheaper by waiting for sales or looking on eBay. I'm not going to read through all of this. If, if you're interested in this information, you can just pause it and, and read through it. With the light fast information though, oh, I'll circle the, the important percentage. I'll just highlight it here. So the percentage that I've written down is the percentage of pencils out of the full range, which have a light fast rating of one or two, which equates to two star and three star in some of the brands or equates to a six, seven or eight 
in the blue or light fast scale. So I'm just circling the percentage, which is the most comparable thing that I could find, really. I'll put a picture up of a comparison of a couple of the different Lightfast systems, in case you're not too familiar with those. I'd say that the colour pencils fall into three main categories. We've got the Dermot Chroma Flow, which are comparable to the Prismacolor Premier with around the 60% mark of Lightfast pencils. These are generally cheaper sets and they are both the slim ones. Then the Derwent Ink Tense stands on its own really because it is a watercolour pencil. And then we have what I'd call the top of the range, Lightfast Artists pencils. So like the Luminance, the Derwent Drawing, Derwent Lightfast the polychromos and the whole wine is sort of getting up that way. The whole wines are definitely the most expensive. The £50 mark I've put on there because I think they're on sale at that at the moment on Jackson's. But I think usually they're nearer the £60 mark. Then you've got the luminance followed by the light fast. I think next then I'll take a look at some of these different pencils. I've pulled out blue and yellows from each kind, though there are a couple of brands that I don't have two similar colours for. I'm going to start off by sharpening each pencil so it's quite a decent point on it. Then I'm going to do a box of solid colour so you can see how it lays down. I'm not pressing as hard as I could possibly press, but I'm pressing quite firmly. The purpose of this is so that you can see how much crumb is produced and also how much the pencil is blunted. So I can see that took off quite a bit there. I'm swatching these on hot press watercolour paper from Beohong. So I think I'll do that with all of them first. This also shows you how much of the grain of the paper is showing through after a first pass over. Quite a lot crumbled away there. I mean, this isn't dead scientific. This is just to try and give you a good impression or a rough impression of the general qualities of the pencils. The tip didn't break on the polychromos there. Now the whole bind pencils, I don't have as many of these, so this is the closest colour I've got.
Next, I'll sharpen them again and I'll kind of talk about where I think the pencils lay in relation to one another in terms of softness and creaminess. This is just my opinion and I haven't used all of these pencils a huge amount. I'm more familiar with some than others. I'm really happy to hear your opinions in the comments and your experience with any of these pencils too. So by softness, I kind of mean how easy the colour lays down without very much pressure. Another indicator of softness is how quickly the pencil tip wears down, if it wears down quite quickly. And at the hard end, I just mean that the nib holds its point for longer and is better for detail and that there is perhaps less colour payoff with the same amount of effort. The dry and creamy thing, I guess this is quite subjective in a way, but by creamy, I mean that there's kind of a wetness to the lead almost. Like there's a, there's a bit of drag and almost butteriness to it. Whereas dry means it has a slightly more powdery feeling. It doesn't necessarily mean that there is less colour payoff, just that the colour pays off in a slightly different way and has a slightly different feel to it. So starting with Derwent drawing pencils, for me, I would class these at the softest and creamiest end of the spectrum. They lay down colour quickly and easily. I'm not able to do detail for too long with them because the tip wears down quickly. And I think because it blunts down quite quickly, it doesn't fill in a lot of the grain of the paper, and just with a moderate pressure. With the Derwent Lightfast pencil, I don't think it's quite as creamy as the Derwent Drawing pencil, but I still find it very soft. So. I'm still going to put it up around in this top corner. Oops, I'm smudging everything. So again, the tooth of the paper doesn't get filled in particularly well because it, it, it blunts down and it's kind of that waxy, slight moistness to the lead. Then I think also up in this top corner, not quite as soft as these two, but still very creamy and nice, I think is the uh, Prismacolor Premiere. I feel I can get a little bit more detail out of the Premieres that they, that they fill the tooth a little bit more than the first two. And they do wear down, but not quite as quickly. Very similar to the Premier Prismacolors is the Derwent Chroma Flow. Though, in my opinion, they are a little bit less creamy than the Prismacolors. And I'm going to pop that here. I said when I was reviewing these um, a few
few weeks ago. But the, the chroma flows are very similar to the Prisma colours, but I can't quite put my finger on why I don't find them as enjoyable to use as the Prisma colours. But I don't. Okay, so next the luminance. I find these lovely and soft with a good colour payoff and the point wears down quite quickly so it's going to come up in this soft spectrum but I don't find them very creamy I'd say they're much kind of drier in consistency so I'll pop those up here somewhere To me, they have a slightly chalky texture, but that makes them sound unpleasant and they're not unpleasant at all to work with. Just, they're just drier. And so it's almost surprising at how well the colour lays down when they are feeling it like they're dry. And then the Faber-Castell polychromos, they are much harder lead. They wear down at a slower rate and I like using them in conjunction with softer pencils to add in details over the top. I kind of find them somewhere in the middle of dry and creamy. So I'm going to pop this kind of down here. And the Derwent ink tents, they're kind of a different pencil really. I almost wondered if I should include them in this or not. They're very creamy, but almost to the point of kind of being claggy and dragging on the paper a little bit. Um, and because they're so kind of creamy and moist, it's almost like they lose their softness in a way because they're pulling. So I wasn't quite sure where to put these. Um, I'm kind of going to put it off here. Because they seem drier and crumblier. So in some ways they could be put on the dry side. But yet they're so dragging on the paper. that I'd still class them as creamy. So take this categorization with a pinch of salt because you might classify it completely differently from me. And then the Holbein Artist pencils. I haven't got um, a navy, I'm afraid. I find these kind of somewhere in the middle, actually. Maybe, I don't know, around here. They are soft, they do have a nice softness to them, but not quite as soft as these others, I don't think. They hold their point a little bit better. And again, they're kind of creamy, but they there's a, a, there's a dryness there too. I think the whole mines are a nice kind of mix between the good qualities of the other pencils. But again, this is really, really subjective. So I am super interested for you to share your thoughts on them and help others to get a feel for them if they're not already familiar with them. So the other thing I'll show is how they blend together with another color.
So in the middle, I'm kind of pressing down quite hard and, and burnishing just to see if that mixes them up anymore. So the Dermot drawing pencil definitely blends the two colours in an easy way so far. Well, the lay down of this light fast is so much softer really and easier than the ink tense. I feel like you don't need much pressure, it's just easy. Okay, that's actually soft enough to be mixing the blue into it rather than just kind of covering it. And I'm afraid these won't be a very good comparison because of the colours being so different. And I don't have a yellow Holbein at all. These are very enjoyable to use. You can see the Prismacolor there, just dying to mix the second it, it touched the blue. So interestingly, in terms of kind of colour mixing and the softness, or blendability, it seems like the Dermot Light Fast is most similar to the Prismacolor Premiere. And actually, although the Chroma Flow is set up as kind of 
direct competition for the Prisma Color. They actually operate quite differently. I'll show you them close up now. The other thing I want to point out and make really clear is that I think these are all brilliant pencils. I think if you have any of these, you've got a really nice pencil. I've been lucky that I haven't found any of my Prismacolor Premieres to be poor quality. In fact, the only one that broke today while I was sharpening was the Faber-Castell Polypochromos. I do really enjoy using all of these pencils and I find that the different qualities they have and the different colour ranges that they have complement each other really well. So the last thing I want to do is show you these colour charts. What I did is swatch out Lightfast down the left hand side, seeing as that's the new product that I've got and wanted to focus on. And then I've chosen to look at Inktense, Prismacolor, Luminance and Polychromos. I've not included Dermot Chromaflows at all because I've only got a box of 12 of those. And for the others category, that's for the Holbeins and the Dermot Drawing Pencils which again, I've got a smaller colour range for, but I just wanted to see the comparison. Not all of these are exactly the same as the Lightfast. What I did was pick out the closest I could find. And again, it's a subjective thing, but if the closest colour wasn't close enough, then I just missed it out. So I'm just going to slowly scan down these. And if you want to get more information from a particular colour, just pause in, take a look. So most of the colours I could find something similar for amongst my other colour pencils. But there were a couple that I didn't have super close to. The Pale Peach isn't identical to the Prisma Colour Beige. It's slightly cooler. I didn't have anything for the cinnamon. I put down the luminous pink white, but it, it again, it's not identical to the oyster. Oyster's a bit cooler. Deep rose, I had nothing identical. The heather and the wild lavender were slightly more muted than the ultramarine pink and the manganese violet from luminance. Then I had nothing like the Midnight Blue or the Arctic or the Ocean Blue. Or the Light Aqua. Um, racing Green. Although some were close, there was nothing identical. Nothing like forest. Olive Earth had the Derwent drawing Olive Earth. And 
actually this oak is a bit browner than the seaweed. Light bronze is actually a little bit more muted than green ochre from luminance. Wheat, we've only got endowment drawing wheat. Venetian red, that's just a dermot drawing Venetian red. Nothing the same as taupe. Warm grey again, that was just a dermot drawing warm grey. Nothing quite like mist. And in fact, looking at this now, the Mars black has got a lovely kind of almost purpley tinge to it, which the sepia ink doesn't have. So I don't think they're close enough really. As far as whites go, I still think that the Holbein soft white and the Dermot Drawing Chinese white are my favorite whites. Probably the Holbein soft white if I had to pick. The other thing about the colour range I'd say of the light fast is that there aren't many paler blues. This mid ultramarine is the only one anywhere like it. So you've got loads and loads of deep dark blues, dark turquoises but hardly anything in the middle, which I was a little bit surprised about. And the same with the greens, you've got a lot of rich greens, which is wonderful because I was looking for like these natural landscapey greens, but you haven't got anything that's paler or more pastely or lighter as far as the greens go. So this is the full range of light fast. I'm just showing them this way up so I can get them all in one shot. I think overall they're an absolutely beautiful range of colours on the more muted side. I don't particularly mind not having like the really bright pinks and purples which tend to be the less light fast colours. So I hope this overview has been of some use. This is just my impressions from my limited use of these pencils. I'm not a professional artist or anything, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.